Nick Max Corner. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Michelle Good's Five Little Indians. This book has won many awards, uh, and it is hard-hitting. The book I can compare it to the most that it's going to affect me is going to be Pet Cemetery, which is a book I read almost two years ago and still think about weekly. Five Little Indians is just like that. It has so many heartbreaking moments in it as well as such beautiful characters in there who struggle and try to make their life the best it possibly can be after dealing with the residential school systems. I personally uh, have been doing as much research as I can into the residential school systems. At the age of 22, I learned that Indigenous people had it bad in our country. And at the age of 34, I learned that our country was even worse than that. I learned that our country had residential schools that worked in the process of taking away their culture, their religion, their language. Uh, usually the Indian was beaten out of them by the nuns and the priests. Young girls were raped by, by priests. Uh, the babies were oftentimes discarded because they weren't a part of the system and they didn't want to register them, and also to hide the atrocities of the church. Now, it's not just the church's fault. The RCMP came and ripped those children away from their families. They came and they took people who were living very well on their own and dismantled them piece by piece. They eradicated them. They killed them. In Canada, it's Canada Day today. It's hot. That's why I'm sweating. Um, we aren't celebrating Canada Day for a lot of people in Canada because genocide is not worth celebrating. Um, the amount of pain that is in the, in the communities for these people is astounding and the fact that they are still standing is an testament to how strong they are because I know that this is fiction but this fiction is built upon reality this fiction in here is built upon real stories from people it's taken and it's fictionalized but that doesn't mean that it didn't happen it doesn't mean that people did not treat them incorrectly or that people didn't give them a chance to live a normal life. This book is something that really hurt to read and definitely drove me into the arms of education for how Canada treats Indigenous people. I am currently reading The Inconvenient Indian by Thomas King, which is a history of, on Indigenous peoples in North America. Um, I've done two of Bob Joseph's books, and of course this one here. I've also read other books by Indigenous authors as well, as I like to try and support um, authors who are in minorities so that they can have their voices heard, their stories told. And to give you guys a little bit of selection into what you can read. Obviously, I have my favorites who are Stephen King and J.R.R. And, um, Tolkien. They are both white men. J.R.R. Tolkien is a Christian white man. I love their works, but it's also driven me to look further into other works by people of color that may be black or indigenous or Asian. I've been trying to personally find those to put in my reading repertoire so that I can actually learn some stuff. Because this book here, like I said, although fiction is absolutely horrifying and sad and heartbreaking, if you have not read it, go pick it up and read it. It will touch your heart. It will give you some education and maybe even give you that push to learn a little bit more. Because right now is a, is a time for learning. It's a time for learning for us white people. It's a time for healing for the indigenous people. And it's a time for action 
for our Canadian government. The government now needs to step up, make Indigenous issues a priority, and start pushing for clean drinking water. I know I got an email from one of them saying, you know, we're putting this much money into it and all that sort of stuff. Okay, you've been putting that much money into it since 2015, and people are still crying for clean drinking water. We still have so many residents going to court with the government of Canada to try and get uh, compensation for the damages done to them and their families from the residential school systems, and the government is fighting them on it. We don't have a good system in Canada set up right now. Um, that is why we need to make policy changes, why we need to make real changes, not even just towards Indigenous people, to people of colour, of all races and backgrounds for that, but specifically our Indigenous population in Canada absolutely needs the attention. And I think that we can get there if we work together. And once we are there, and they have been lifted up, I think we can celebrate Canada Day again. But we can celebrate it for a different reason. We can celebrate it for coming together and doing something amazing for people who have not had something done for them for a long time. That's what I have to say about that today. I'm sorry it's not as much of a book review as it is on my feelings towards it. There is a lot to unpack inside the book. There is a lot going on. It is not something I can just talk about little bits because there is so much. There is so much. There, it deals with addiction, it deals with prostitution, it deals with um, alcoholism, which is also addiction, it deals with mental health, depression, everything like that. The side effects to being abused for so long. So go check out Five Little Indians by Michelle Good. Totally worth a read. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for coming to the corner. Take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you later.